on the build show today we are at my ranch project and we're going to be talking about a really cool prefabricated house system that we did with this house in framing now most houses that are framed are framed traditionally where you have a, a bundle of two by fours let's say that are delivered on site and the framer assembles those sticks into a structurally framed house but what you're seeing here is these panels were built in a factory and trucked to the site on 15 semis. Now this is not a small house, this is 7,500 square feet or so. But what you're gonna find is this is a very high performance, very well built and very well insulated house. Today's build show, we're gonna get into all the nitty gritty on this Bensonwood timber frame SIPS hybrid. Let's get going. All right, guys, I call myself a builder, and my name maybe is on the door, but really, this is the real builder. Daniel Glauser, good to see you, brother. Yeah, good to see you, man. Looking really good out here, man. Thank you. So, Daniel, let's walk these guys through this project and this system, because this is a SIPS panel, right? A structurally insulated panel. And we put it together like a big jigsaw, but this is not like the traditional SIPS. You know, when I think of SIPS, I think of uh, some type of foam panel uh, with maybe some two-by structure and uh, a layer of OSB on the inside and the outside, but that's totally different here, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, it is a panelized system, so they do come in sections, um, but each panel, the wall assembly, consists of a 5 8 sheet of zip on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, the structural members in between are nine and a half inch eye studs. Okay, so um, what we'd use for floor joists sometimes. Exactly, um, and then on the inside is a layer of 7 16 OSB. Uh, and then the, the cavity fill is a dense pack cellulose. Got it. So walls, uh, we've got nine inches plus of cellulose. What's our R value roughly on the uh, walls? Roughly 36 inches, uh, 36 R. That's a lot. And then how about the roof system? So the roof system um, is also dense pack cellulose. It is made up, they come in eight foot wide sections. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are glue lamb structure beams that basically go across. And then there's the dense pack cellulose in between that. Got it. So that roof's probably a decent R value. What are we, around 50 or so in that yeah, roof? Yeah, about R50. It's gonna vary a little bit depending on the uh, roof panel because we do have this kind of wedge-shaped uh, design that Lay Flato came up with. That's right, it's got a, uh, a flat bottom, um, but then tapers to um, out to the, to the eaves. Yeah, now when you look at this from the outside, Daniel, this looks like it could be uh, a perfect wall house, meaning a house that doesn't, that really everything's fully taped from the foundation all the way to the rooftop and back down again, right? We're seeing some type of uh, grayish tape between the panels and the foundation, and then zip tape. What's the gray tape I'm seeing there? Yeah, so that's exactly right. So we have the connection between the slab and the panel is um, Sega Fentrim. Okay. And um, the panels, for the most part, when they arrive, are already taped with zip, mm -hmm. um, but then the, sec the various sections, as they get put together, we tape those seams. Um, and then we have some more Sega products that, that match the wall to the roof panel. Okay. We, you can see the wig love there. Yep. Um, but essentially it is. It, it is from slab all the way up the wall, across the top, and back down to the slab. It's all sealed um, with tape. I've heard Joe Stiebrick say that you want your pencil to never leave the paper if you're, if you're tracing that air barrier from one side of the house to the other. And that's what this has done, which I think is perfect. Yeah, and coming panelized already, the way the pieces fit together, it made it really easy to one, tape any open seams that were there, but also troubleshoot if, if, if any additional needed to be done. Yeah, for sure. Now on the outside, I'm seeing, uh, looks like liquid flash on all of your windows for waterproofing, all four sides of that jam, right? Yeah, that's right. We um, decided that was the best way that, for us to um, waterproof those windows. Um, we did essentially two inches around the outside and then the full surface on the interior of the jam or of the uh, rough opening. Love it. And then on top of the roof, you've got an additional underlayment, it looks like. Um, is that what I'm seeing here, the shark skin that's on the roof? Yeah, so after um, the house got put together and all the panels were taped and any, um, there are some roof penetrations that we had up there, those all got sealed. Then we use the shark skin to cover the entire thing. Later on, there'll be fur strips and then metal roof on top of okay, that. Okay, good deal. Now, Daniel, when you walk in, number one, the view's incredible out yeah, here at this, uh, at this property. 
But the first thing I immediately notice that I think people are wondering about is it appears to be no walls on the inside. Like this is a big barn almost, right? Yeah, that, that's right. So it's a bit misleading. Um, we are doing a finished topping slab in here uh -huh. that will have an integral color. We've got um, a layer of, so we have a structural slab. Yep. And then we have a layer of two inch insulation. Yep, so this halo subterra is on top of slab. On top of slab. And then on top of that, we're going to pour four inches of integral color. Yep. And we have nearly no interior walls so that when we put that topping slab on, we've got a nice big open space to fully uh, trowel that out and make it look beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, there, and then we'll come back in and we'll add the interior walls later. There are a couple of interior walls and those are for um, shear, shear protection. Shear panel, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And then you've got a couple posts that came from Benson Wood as well with this kind of cool bottom with an adjustable base that we're gonna pour around, I'm assuming. That's right, that, that adjustable base gets buried and those columns actually get buried inside of interior walls as well, so you won't see those. Yeah. Um, but they are there just for the support of the structure, yeah. Now Benson Wood, old company, they've been around a long time. I, I watched Ted Benson in the 80s on this old house. Yeah. Um, I think of them as a timber frame company. Um, how, do you, how do you relate that kind of timber framing to what we've got here? Well, so I think the idea behind it is um, what you don't see is the timber skeleton that holds this house up. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are glue lamb um, columns like these ones here. Yeah. You can kind of, you if can you look You see the bottom up, of that beam right there. You can see the bottom of the beam there. And there's and one right up here. Up here, where at the end of each panel is a, uh, a glue lamb timber. Yeah, got it. And then on the inside, these panels that are outside walls, I'm seeing you've got, what, a two by three here? That's right. That comes pre-notched from those guys? That's right. So that, this is our chase where we can run our electrical and our plumbing mm -hmm. um, pre-notched so it makes it uh, easier for the trades yeah. um, to get everything through. Love it. No drilling really necessary. No drilling. And then um, the finished surface will be gypsum that goes right on here. Right on top of this. And then these hold downs that I'm seeing, these are probably uh spaced per the engineer but those are actually into a framing member probably a solid framing member and these uh pieces that probably came from simpson were poured in this cast in the slab and then when that panel came down then our framers actually attach those on right almost so you're right there is a framing member in there we actually drilled these oh, after we did. the fact okay. um, so that we could get the placement just right. Oh, that was smart. Yeah, so um, with, with a big three inch long bit, mm -hmm. those got drilled out and then anchored with epoxy. Makes uh, sense. And then after it was cured, they got tightened up. And back to that concept that I was mentioning earlier of uh, almost like a barn, what I love about this is it is a big, wide open space. It enables us to have a really airtight shell on the outside. Yeah. Uh, really good waterproofing with that zip. We do have some good overhangs here, which is a little different than a house maybe like mine that I framed uh, perfect wall style or monopoly framing as I've called it. Um, but with these R36 walls and that R50 plus roof, this big house is gonna be really efficient, isn't it? Oh, absolutely it is. And the overhangs, speaking of, They've got an integrated gutter, and when it's all said and done, they're about five feet wide. Is that right? You got yeah. a five foot overhang yeah, on the whole Yeah, so plenty outside. of protection. That's really cool. Yeah. And then I'm noticing all the interior is taped as well. That's a detail that I first saw uh, from Benson when I did one of their projects, but I saw it a lot when I traveled through Europe. Like when I was in Switzerland, uh, all the houses there had interior sheathing that was taped. Interesting. And yeah. then some kind of a service cavity, but it's pretty new for us on American homes. We typically have sheathing just on one side. Yeah, that's What do you right. think about that as a builder? How's it work for you? Um, you know, I really like it conceptually. It works great, you know, be, being able to control not only any infiltration from the outside in, but it's a, it's a sealed unit, essentially. Yeah. Um, and so you can really separate your interior from your outside. Yeah. Talk to me about the panels themselves. When they came together, how are they attached? Yeah, so it's interesting. So actually, this is a great example here. This is a seam, um, two different panels. Okay. And so inside of this is, like we talked about, that glue lamb timber. Mm -hmm. And so there are a series of lags that they put in. And this is all prescribed in, in, um, by the engineer. Okay. Um, so they're attached this way um, into those, those timbers. 
the roof panels sit down on top and they've got long screws. I think they're 24 inches. They oh go gosh. all the way down through the top. There's a, a structural member there. So they go through that and then anchor into the wall panel at the top wow. every 18 inches or so, I think. Holy cow, that's yeah. wild. So it's really Beefy. locked in. Once it's together, it's together. It's really in there. Yeah. And another detail that I really like that I saw on the house that I did with Bensonwood five years ago, four or five years ago, was this. This is a, uh, a double gasketed seal sealer. Yeah. Um, were you around when they put this bottom plate down and then dropped them on? Yeah, that's right. So um, essentially it's double protection. That's mm -hmm. why there's two there. Um, but this runs between the panel and the plate, yep. between every panel, and between the wall panel and the roof panels. Wow. So, so they're using that on top as well. Yeah, so everything is not only locked together tight, but it's also sealed, so there's no uh, infiltration there either. That's wild. And what's cool about this is you're not breaking into that cavity where the insulation goes. And in fact, we're fully insulated and fully watertight now, right? Yeah, that's right. So when the trades come in and they run all their different mechanicals, um, we're not getting into that wall panel at all. Yeah. We're either living in this uh, chase here or in the case of the ceiling, mm -hmm. um, that's been all planned ahead of time. So the duct work uh, has a spot to go. Yeah, I like that. This is a cool design by Lake Plato too with all the, uh, uh, God, I, I, what do they call those? I forget the uh, terminology for those, but all the metal connectors are really cool looking. Yeah. That's going to be really neat. And those are all tightened up and we're all ready to go on those. Yeah, that's right. As part of the raising process, um, everything gets plumbed and tightened. So again, it's locked in place and it's not moving. And then I'm seeing on all these panels, there's some recesses that are happening in a few areas. Talk to me about those recesses and how we get electrical and potentially plumbing and electrical or and uh, HVAC in. Yeah, sure. So this um, particular area, being as large as it is with as many windows as it is, it has quite a bit of load that mm -hmm. needs to be uh, taken care of. So there will be two main trunk lines that run in that recessed cavity there. And then at every window, you can see spaces go out. So there'll be branches that come off with slot registers uh, at the ends there. Ah, and so then, that's what we're seeing is a slot register right there. Yeah, Got and it. then once all of that is in place, there'll be strapping across the bottom of that, and then there'll be a flat ceiling, which will be um, some tongue and groove hemlock. Killer. And this is the really the main family room, kitchen space. Yeah. As we go back towards the um, bedroom, master bedroom down this way, or some of these other utility spaces, there's also recesses in the ceiling that seem to be kind of random uh, recesses. Talk to me about those. Yeah, exactly. So this is a different ceiling condition than we have in the main part. Um, but this, everywhere there's a recess like this, it's either a for lighting mm -hmm. or for fans, exhaust fans, things like that. There will be an additional fur down of three inches so the wiring can run between that and the, the panel. But we need a little bit more clearance for our light fixtures. Yeah. So next up, pour the slab, and then the framers are gonna come back, Brian and his crew, right? Yeah. Uh, to handle all the interior walls, and then we're ready for trades. Um, pretty fast compared to conventional framing, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Um, surprisingly, so we did the Benson Wood raising in the month of May, and we got 20 inches of rain. Oh my gosh, I forgot, <laughs> forgot about that to mention yeah, that. Yeah, which is crazy. Um, and it's July, it's August now, it's, I guess, yeah, first but, week in August. But given that, uh, we were able to raise the entire structure and tape and seal everything that we needed to. Um, so short of getting the windows in, making it weather tight, essentially. Yep. Um, in roughly 30 days. That's amazing. With a crew of five, five framers. And what's our, what's our total square footage under roof for that? Um, it's about 7,500. 7,500 square feet in 30 days, fully airtight, fully insulated, uh, and almost ready for trades. We're doing this secondary step where we've got these interiors to frame and then we're ready for trades. That's right. So very, very fast. Yeah, extremely fast. Impressive. Yeah. However, there's a pre-construction time and there's a factory time Absolutely. built on that. Can you talk to that about, about that at all? Yeah, so um, the panels themselves, so the design phase started a long time ago mm -hmm. um, and they get through all of that and then it goes into construction in the factory. Yep. Um, they package all of those pieces individually. They're all labeled and marked and they've got uh, plans, laminated plans that come yeah. with the building um, and they ship those down. So we got, I think, 15 semis full of panels. From New Hampshire. From New Hampshire, <laughs> that's right. Um, luckily, we're on, on a big piece of land here, so yeah. we had a lot of lay down space. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so they build those panels and um, mark them all and ship them down. Yeah, and big thanks to Hugo on our team who spent a lot of time in pre-construction. Absolutely. Making sure everything was coordinated, that we have what we need. The guys at Positive Energy, which is a mechanical designer, um, worked with Benson Wood to make sure everything was laid out mechanically so that when we get into trades, we know exactly what's happening on this yeah, job. It was All a, the MEPs are totally laid out and ready to go. Yeah, it was a huge effort for everyone to collaborate on that. Yeah, and, uh, and Bill Wood, uh, who was our framer who did the rough framing, uh, and his crew uh, worked with two guys from Benson Wood who came down and had some prior knowledge and also actually built some of those panels. What was it like having those guys on site? Yeah, it was really, it was fantastic. Um, they worked really well with our, with Bill's guys. Mm -hmm. um, and to see with just a handful of guys, the coordination, we had um, Justin, who was the, the captain. Yep, and he from ran, Benson Wood. From Benson Wood, and he ran the ship. And um, basically we had, he was coordinating with uh, two of Bill's guys. Yeah. And then he also had Brandon and Reed uh, who are from Benson Wood as well. And so Brandon was running the telehandler, Reed was getting straps and running things back and forth, and they, they, it, was, it was really impressive to watch. Very impressive. Daniel, I don't really want to get into cost because it's, it's hard to quantify all these costs in comparison to stick framing. It's definitely more. Is it 2x more? I, I don't know for sure what the, what the costs are. But from your perspective, what are the main benefits for both us as the builder and for the client? for building with this system compared to us conventionally framing it and, and working on kind of normal construction methods? Sure, I, I would say one of the big benefits is the amount of planning that goes into it before we even start. Mm -hmm. And so, so many of the details have been thought through and figured out yep. so that when we do start construction, there really aren't problems, well, we didn't encounter any problems. That's right. Um, and so that was huge, huge right? Um, but then the speed with which we could put it together and knowing that we can have this place sealed and insulated as quick as we can, um, it, it, it was just, I was blown away by how fast it came together. Yeah, and for me to get a house that, you know, you could get a passive house rated uh, easily with this system, uh, depending on what windows and doors you ended up uh, choosing. We're going to be near passive house on this build with really high precision and a really good value, I think, for our clients. So even though this is not an inexpensive process, I think there's a lot of benefits. And the last benefit that I want to mention is I think speed is an underrated thing. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm finishing my personal house under construction. I'm going on probably 18 months right now. Yeah. Uh, it's been uh, a slog getting through it. Uh, and to, to think about going from foundation to trades coming in in six weeks or eight weeks in a normal or six weeks on a really detailed 7,000 square foot custom home, that's, that's unheard of. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And that pre-planning makes all the difference now when we're on the job site. Yeah, absolutely. Daniel, great job, man. Thanks a lot, man. Love it. Guys, if you're interested in working with Benson Wood, I'll put a link in the description. Great company. It's now my second build with them. And even though we're many states away, things worked really, really well with these guys. Uh, and it helps have an incredible builders uh, like Daniel and the craftsmen that we've used here, uh, our concrete guy, our framer, our plumbers, uh, our electricians, all these guys on my team worked really, really hard to get there. Stay tuned for more on this one. I'll put Daniel's Instagram feed uh, below so that you can follow Daniel. He's posting from the job site. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.